All right, welcome to Learning Plan 1. This is the first learning, learning plan in this course. And I'm going to take you through the assignments so you understand exactly what's expected of you and what we're going to be covering. So as you come into the Learning Plan section of Blackboard, you're going to click on Learning Plans, and then you're going to, just going to click on Learning Plan 1A. And then you're going to come to this, this screen automatically. All right, so the first thing you're going to notice is the checklist, all right? So you want to make sure you go through the checklist and uh, review, read, examine, listen, uh, do whatever that the checklist suggests and requires to do. So as you notice also that it's going to give you the assignments and how many points are possible for, the, for those assignments. All right, so the first assignment you're going to have is that you'll be great on is the confidentiality agreement but what we're going to look at first is just go through some of these so you understand how this all works so you come down here review a syllabus if you haven't done that already um, make sure you re you listen watch my video on, under course information about the syllabus so you click on the syllabus and it's gonna just take you directly to the course information page um, where you'll find this, the link to the syllabus down there and you just click on that and that'll open that up for you. All right, so as we move through the checklist, what you're going to do is review and sign the handout on confidentiality. All right, you want to make sure you, you review this. You're going to print it out, sign it, um, or you can also, when you submit it, type in um, the dialog box that you agree to the terms of this. All right, and so this is to protect us, it's to protect you, um, and to protect your client as well. All right, so what's said in class stays in class, especially regarding the transcripts that we're going to be discussing in journal entries and things like that, or anything discussed on the discussion boards. All right, and then here are the instructions for that. So uh, you can, in the comments box when you submit this, just click and write, I agree to abide by the guidelines of, con of confidentiality in this class. That's all you need to do. All right, so key concepts for Chapter 1. You want to make sure that you read Chapter 1 and review it and know it. Um, we're going to be going through uh, the developmental stages. All right, the right-wrong stage, multiplistic stage, realistic stage. Um, we're going to be discussing supervision, which is crucial for any helper in this field. Um, approaching the art of helping as a reflective practitioner. We always, as a helper, want to be uh, reflecting upon what we could do better, how we could improve, how we could help our clients. All right. And then there's just some basic discussions about what, what it, becoming a helper entails, um, and that it is a lifetime journey. You've never quote unquote arrived um, no matter how many how long you've been doing this type of work I've been doing it now for nine years and there's always things that I'm learning and the reason why is because every person is different we're all individuals and we all have our unique personality traits and beliefs and values and so uh, working in this field allows you to be exposed to all sorts of different uh, different personalities and um, cultures and beliefs and values and um, it's it's a very rewarding uh, field to be in, but it's also uh, a lot of work because you're taking a lot of time to learn about someone else and their culture and their beliefs and values and how that affects their environment and their world. All right, we're also going to be discussing some ethical guidelines. It's very very important to abide by the ethical guidelines in whatever agency or company that you're working with, or whether it's a government agency or a nonprofit agency, um, they're in place for a reason and uh, very, very important. All right, so you're going to read chapter one. You're going to go, th and if, you, if you're more of a visual person, there's a PowerPoint lecture here for you that you can go through with, with some PowerPoint slides. Just click on that link there. Um, and then you're also going to click on this link which is going to take you to the National uh, Human Services, National Organization of Human Services. And there are some ethical standards for human service professionals. So another great um, tool here to kind of help you see 
what types of standards there are for the human services field. All right, there's quite a few of them. So I would encourage you to read them and review them and make sure you understand them. All right, so you can go through that. All right, and then there's also a guidelines for feedback. Now, whenever I've, as long as I've taught this class, and even since I've been in the counseling or helping field, it seems like the general public makes some some pretty general assumptions about counseling and helping, and that um, counselors are there to give advice and provide feedback and to um, help people move in the right direction. And really what counseling and helping is, is listening to your client, helping them find their own way, and then making some suggestions along the way if they're open to it. We never ever want to just give feedback without asking for permission first, which is critical. Um, no one likes to be told what to do. Uh, and so it's very important that when we are in the process of possibly giving some feedback or inserting our own professional judgments or opinions that we ask for permission first. Um, and here are some guidelines and tips on delivering feedback effectively, um, which can come across as non-judgmental, which is the way we want to come across in, in this field. We never ever want to come across as being judgmental. We don't want to push our own our own objectives, our own agenda on anyone else um, that we're trying to help because that person probably has their own agenda and it's their agenda that we want to focus on and want to help them through. All right, and then there's some tips on how to receive feedback. Be open. Um, you want to listen first. Listen to the entirety of what your client is telling you before you respond. It's important that we listen um, and reflect on what's being brought to us before making the statements. So um, it, it does take some skill to be able to receive feedback, especially when it's not favorable, um, which, which does happen. So, um, But it's important that we receive that in a professional manner. All right, so make sure you review that. And here is a first learning plan assignment, which is the discussion board. You want to make sure your post is between 200 words but not longer than 500. Um, and you want to be responding to everyone that has responded to your initial post. And you want to respond to at least two other of your peers' responses as well. Um, the idea is to create some dialogue and, and learning opportunities for everyone. And I'll be jumping in as well and, and giving some feedback as well. So this first one is, is pretty simple. You're just going to be giving your name, your location, your major, and then pick one of the following prompts down there. Helper quality, supervision, personal counseling, personal values, or qualities of a reflective practitioner. So like I said, you only need to pick one of those prompts to discuss. All right. Make sure you're posting as frequently as the learning plan is open. If it's open for four days, you want to be re responding and posting for four days in order to receive full credit. If you're in um, a shorter term, make sure that you're responding within the time frame that the learning plan is open each day. It's important. All right, we want to also make sure that we're respectful of all opinions. I also encourage you, if you have not watched the, the grading rubric, um, video that you go back and do that. That's found under the announcements and course information um, in Blackboard and I discuss how these discussion boards are graded. And then you have your journal starter for chapter one and so you're going to submit this as a Word document and um, you're going to choose one of the prompts below and it's going to tell you how long this needs to be. Some like for instance in this learning plan there's the first one is at least four separate paragraphs, the second one is at least four, and the third one is at least three separate paragraphs. So make sure you're following all the instructions here. All right. Um, and then you're just going to submit it by clicking on the link and uploading it directly to Blackboard. If you have any questions or problems with that, please let me know um, and we'll work through that. Make sure when you end your journal entries that you are 
reflecting on three good things that have happened to you this week. This is a way for you to kind of reflect on the good things that have been going on in your life. Whether they be small or big, it doesn't matter, but each, general, each uh, journal entry needs to have the three good things for the week. Um, and so that is that. Again, if you have any questions, please let me know. This is Learning Plan 1A. All right, and so you want to pay attention to the start and close dates for this learning plan and make sure that you're abiding by those guidelines because what will happen, I'll leave this learning plan open, um, but I will close it when I grade and then I'll open it back up. All right, see you at learning plan 1B.